Hi friends, thanks so much for being a part of More Than You Asked For. I want to invite you to our Family Worship and Prophetic Night on Wednesday, May 4th. On the first Wednesday of each month, we have an incredible night dedicated to extended worship and prophetic words. We would love for you to be there. You can visit tfc.org slash plan your visit to learn more. Hope to see you there. Let's go ahead and start. Okay. Okay. So, just as organic as that was. <laughs> <laughs> this is natural and organic. <laughs> oh my gosh. She can't do this with you here, Daniel. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here next to Daniel. <laughs> Who is? I'm your husband. You are my husband. <laughs> exactly. Yes. That would explain his strong, affectionate arm around you at this particular moment. And possibly your blushing at this particular moment. That might explain blushing. all kinds of things. I am blushing. She is blushing. My goodness. <laughs> this is the best kind of work day. Maybe this wasn't exactly. a good idea. I don't know what's going to happen today. <laughs> Well, we're so glad well, to have you here, Daniel. I'm glad to be here. We're glad you're here. It's going to be fun. Well, I think we should we should talk about too how for us we were recording this on a Monday. Yesterday was Easter, and so yes. we just need to celebrate everything that God did on Easter. I mean, it was incredible. I think we had what 108 baptisms at yes. all of our campuses, yes. all of our Trinity Fellowship campuses. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing to see people. And I love seeing them come down and getting baptized. My faith, well, you tell the story because it actually came through your team, but I love. Yeah. So one of our team members was talking about our concierge team who said that they had several families who had been watching at the 9 a.m. online. Mm-hmm. And then as they watched, they felt that they very strongly that they needed to come actually to the church building and be baptized. That's so that's they amazing. came with that's their right. families and got baptized. <laughs> Which is, is that amazing? amazing? <laughs> is yes. amazing. That's Holy Spirit. And that's right? him having their hearts open to Jesus mm-hmm. and then responding to him. So it's just the sweetest so sweet. thing. I love it. Yeah, that's my favorite. Well, and even for us, our oldest son, Cohen, got yes. baptized yesterday. Woo-hoo. That was amazing. Yes. It was so, so sweet. I mean, he's our guy who... He just thinks everything through. You know, he's a very calculated thinker, wants to figure things out. And so he probably, when do you think it was? A couple of years ago. It's been at least two or three years. That he started talking about that. That we've been talking about it. And he just wants it on his time frame, kind of. He didn't want anybody there. That was his thing. He he asked, (laughs) is is everybody going to watch me? It's like, well, I'm yes, like, son. Well, you're, I mean, you're, that's part of it. You know? <laughs> you're communicating. <laughs> that's right. Part of the done. confession of faith, right? I'm, I'm <laughs> doing this in a public declaration. I'm doing this in front of people. I'm living yes. for you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. And I'm yes. not ashamed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he he asked us actually on the way home from some family's house if he could get baptized. And oh. immediately we're like, absolutely you can. But oh. it's like, it's also like 8.30 Eight on Saturday <laughs> night. So oh, we're like, yes, you. yes, absolutely. You can get baptized tomorrow. And... Like we got to text the family, like Cohen's getting yeah. baptized. We got to figure out the logistics, but it was so sweet. It was, awesome. it was so sweet. So and he picked perfect. the busiest service of the busiest day of the year. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell. Which is awesome. <laughs> it was perfect. It worked out perfectly, it did. didn't it? It did. Yes. yes. And you got to baptize him, didn't I you? did. Mm-hmm. I got to run from one side of the church to the other. And yes. Hop in there with him. It was oh. a, it was really cool. And yeah, one of his best friends, Charlie Talley, also yeah. got baptized. So he's so sweet. Talented. That yeah. is so wonderful. Remind really us awesome. how old Cohen is. Nine. He's nine. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. He's in third so to grade. make that decision and know in his heart that that's what he wants to do and that he wants to live for Jesus, mm-hmm. I mean, is incredible. So, mm-hmm. so thank sweet. you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank that's you for awesome. Cohen. Hi, friends. Thanks so much for listening to the More Than You Asked For podcast. We'll get right back into the episode, but I want to let you know about the Bible cast that Jimmy leads every Monday through Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Jimmy takes a section of scripture and in about 10 minutes, we read and we study it together. We would love for you to join us. It's a great way to start a daily scripture practice, spend time with God, and connect with others. You can check out tfc.org slash biblecast to learn more about how to join. I'll see you at 7 a.m. Well, so we haven't, I, I mean, I've told Daniel some about our format here on the yeah, podcast. It's your first day. Daniel's yeah. never, never been here before. I mean, he's been <laughs> to our house many times, but he's never been here <laughs> for podcasting before. Yeah. So I was telling him, he, he was, 
he, you, I'll talk to you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you were like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, well, that's part of it is that I know what we're going to talk about, but not everyone gets to know what we're going to talk about today. Meaning we don't, Daniel. <laughs> we you're do in not. the dark with us. I did give him a little, like just a little teaser as to what we were going to talk about so that you could have some time to prepare. Okay, oh, so wait a minute. No, no, no hold on. No, she wait, is definitely no. exaggerating this. So when she says time to prepare, she this. means as I was driving here. <laughs> Oh, she okay. said, That's hey. hey, no, that is a heads up though, Daniel. That is what we call a heads up. Oh, okay, now I know. Yes, now it wasn't a week for you to process well, yeah. or she, a month for you to process and get all your thoughts on it. But, she, you know, she told, you, there's plenty of time. She told me last week, hey, I think, let's have you on the podcast. I was like, tell, yeah, tell me what we're going to talk about. She's like, yeah, I will. <laughs> so here we are. It's due time. Bree, uh -huh. it's all in due time. Tell us, yes. it is time. It's time. So but, do I push the button? Or no, well, you're going to set it, it up. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to set it up just a little bit because we've, every time thus far, which is like twice <laughs> that we've pushed <laughs> the button to ask the question, we're kind of like, what do we call the question asker? Like, is it, is it our listener? Is it like our, our listener? viewer? Who is <gasps> it? We do have viewers. We do have viewers Well, now. but you don't know if they're viewing or listening. Well, it could be one of either. Do we have right. viewers? <laughs> so we could call them a watcher, but that seems a little creepy. No. If you're a viewer, you can take this opportunity to, to hit that bell and subscribe to our channel. Yes! yes. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So maybe it's our, our askers or something that our listeners are, I don't know. People we love. The people we love. Yes. <laughs> we do. That's all the setup I have. Okay, so, so I should push the button. Now you get to push the all button. All right, here we go. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's get our question for the day. Can you talk about the whole body as a temple concept? Like, is it biblical to care for your body with exercise and eating well? Because I feel like it can be really easily abused. I know that a lot of us, it's difficult with the whole self-confidence related to physicality thing. Like, should I feel bad after eating four donuts in the morning? <laughs> Or should I make exercise more of a priority? <laughs> or should I be happy with myself and my body just like I am? That's a great question. Thank you for great that question. question. And I'm not playing on my phone. I I'm, I'm getting it. that Bible verse pulled up right yes. quick so we can have it. I love it. So while you're looking that up, I just want to take note that last show we uh -huh. had birthday <laughs> well, cake. Exactly. And then... Today, we had crumble cookies. Yeah. Because we have a brand new crumble cookie in town and we needed to yes. test the crumble oh cookies. Oh my it gosh. It very important. You know, <laughs> funny. So, I'm so glad you asked that question. Thanks what for that setup. Makes me want to run downstairs and get another cookie bite. <laughs> another cookie. That's a great question. It really is. And it's important. Mm -hmm. And I know you're looking up that scripture. But one thing I think is so significant about that is that when we realize that we are not our own. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have the scripture says that we have been bought with the price by the blood of Jesus Christ. So because we have been bought, we're no longer our own. Yeah. And so when we have that kind of mindset that says, oh, I'm responsible for taking care of this temple. And then when I think about I am actually housing the holy presence of God. Yes. Then that's pretty um that that's pretty sobering. And so that does help when you're looking at a fourth donut. <laughs> like, well, I guess I'm not my own. So maybe we should have thought about that before the fourth donut. <laughs> well, for sure. And and it's very important to recognize, you know, so so maybe what we can do too as we're diving into this is there's is as you kind of set us up a little bit, there's gonna be some rabbit trails probably we can follow here on this subject. Sure. But maybe this is also a good rabbit trail to go down and just talk about biblical her hermeneutics. Mm -hmm. How how do we how do we interpret scripture and what does scriptural interpretation look like because the the question the the heart of the question was there's a bible verse that says this can that also be translated to mean this 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 and this mm -hmm. so that that's kind of the essence of it and uh and so it might be a, just a, an opportunity for us to, to kind of dive into that so here's here's the actual verse that our listener watcher viewer asker ask asker ask our friend that our we friend love. that we love very much our friend who's asking for a friend and, and, it, and this is verse 19 of first corinthians chapter 6 
And so verse 19 says this, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness? Actually, let me just start over. That was a very dyslexic reading of that, so I'm going to try it again. Have it you for- It it's does okay. happen. Thank you for your it's grace. Okay. Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit of holiness who lives in you? You don't belong to yourself any longer for the gift of God. The Holy Spirit lives inside your sanctuary, or that can also be translated uh, temple, sanctuary or temple. You were God's expensive purchase paid for with tears of blood. So by all means, then use your body to bring glory to God. And so this is talking clearly about us needing to take care of our body. The fact that we are the temple, we are the sanctuary, which literally just means house, the living place of the Holy Spirit. And we should, we should tend to our bodies. We should take care of our bodies. And so that's a, that's an important thing. But if we're going to do hermeneutics, part of what we need to do is we need to look at what came before this and what comes right after this so that we can have the context for specifically what this verse is talking Talking about, and if you back up just a few verses, it um, you know uh, it's pretty st- strong. It's what he's talking about. So in First mm-hmm. Corinthians chapter six, starting in verse fifteen, he says, "Don't you know that your bodies belong to Christ as His body parts? Should one presume to take the members of Christ's body and make them the member of a harlot? Absolutely not." Aren't you aware then of the fact that when anyone sleeps with a prostitute, he becomes a part of her and she becomes a part of him? For it has been declared the two will become a single body. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is mingled into one spirit with him. This is why you must keep running away from sexual immorality. For every other sin is a per, uh, a, a person commits. Start again. For any other sin a person commits is external to the body. But immorality involving sinning against your involves sinning against your own body. Have you forgotten your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit? So now we get right into the verse. So it's clearly talking about sexual immorality, mm-hmm. and then and then the the passage immediately following is Paul talks about now sex and marriage. Now for my response concerning the issues you've asked me to address, which saying saying is it proper for a man? And he goes on and talks about immorality among husbands and wives and how we should live together. So, you know, both before and after this passage that does talk about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit, he's talking about sexual purity. He's talking about maintaining yourself in sexual purity. And another part of hermeneutics as well is to go back and look at who the audience was that the author was writing to and some of the history and and what the reason was. And of course, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter of instruction to the church at Corinth. And we know that in Corinth, there was a whole lot of worship that went up to uh, Diana and many others. But part of the worship to that pagan god, that Greek god, involved prostitution. So there was temple prostitutes, and that was considered part of the worship to that god. And so he's basically saying, look, you got to separate yourselves from the way the world is worshiping, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? So, you know, from a from a hermeneutical standpoint, he's talking about sexual purity, but that doesn't mean that God doesn't care about how we treat the temple of the Holy Spirit. So there's yeah. certainly room for us, but you, you certainly can't take that verse and say you can't have donuts. Now, four may be a lot, but it doesn't mean you can't have some donuts. <laughs> well, and I think he said, did he say um, in the question, how should I feel after I have four donuts in the morning? I'm going, well, like, you probably shouldn't feel... Probably like, shouldn't feel really you're, good. You're probably probably shouldn't feel hurt. great. <laughs> <laughs> probably not too great. <laughs> well, it's it. interesting too that there there was even a I guess it's a theory or a study that we came across here recently that talks about like it's I think it's called personhood theory and it's this theory that's even kind of growing in popularity amongst even Christians that it's like if um, if we are you know body soul and spirit that ultimately what matters most is spirit and the body is just the house like it doesn't and and it's a it's a secular theory that's also like carried over into christianity but that because spirit is what matters spirit is eternal the body is just a vessel right. for us to do with you know whatever we whatever we want i would never heard that before well and that particular term because that's even what was going on in that John's dealing with with the Gnostics, like mm-hmm. the special knowledge and that the only thing that's eternal is your spirit. So it doesn't actually matter what we do with your body right now on earth. And and even some es- escapist idea that, okay, we're God, Jesus saved us. So we'll be a spirit. Our bodies don't matter. Right. So what, what was the term that you used just a minute ago? Personhood theory. Personhood theory. I don't yeah. think I've ever 
I think I've heard the personhood theory. Yeah. But we, we know we know a couple of things. Uh, did you have a verse? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go. No, you can go ahead. I have, I have something to say. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Well, I, I want you to. Well, I, I, what I was thinking was, is in that same context, you know, we're at the end of the day, what do we have that's ours? I mean, ultimately what we have to address, and, and I think the heart of the question, whether we're tying it to that particular scripture or not, the heart of the question is, is does our body belong to ourselves? Right. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, I think the question is, you know, well, what really belongs to us? And if we make Jesus the Lord of our life, by definition, we're making him Lord of everything. He's mm-hmm. Lord of my finances. He's Lord of my career. He's Lord of my marriage. He's Lord of my, you know, so he's, he's Lord of all my stuff. So if Jesus is Lord of my life, then he has to be Lord of my physical body as well. Yes. I mean, that has to be a part of the complete package of what he's lordship over. Um, other, otherwise, I'm withholding something from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that goes into your thought life yeah. as mm-hmm. well. Your the, the decisions that you make as being part of your soul, your emotions. So I don't get to just have my own emotions. I'm like, Lord, I want my emotions to be surrendered to Him, and then in that place, that's where redemption happens. Right. So whether it's my my what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I'm choosing to do then that means I want to surrender all of that to him. And in that place, then I, he says, yes, well, thank you. These need healing. They, they need comfort. They need nourishment. And then as I express those things, then hopefully then you will, that's where we see the redemption of that because it's given over to him. Yeah. So I can willingly choose to keep surrendering every area of my life and every aspect of my life to Jesus because I'm there's not an aspect that I don't want Jesus to be Lord over I think oftentimes that's what people want is they want a savior but I don't really want a Lord right so it's like I want you to save me I don't want to go to hell that sounds scary Mm -hmm. but I got this yeah but it's like I got this I'm gonna do what I want smoke what I want drink what I want I'm gonna as much as I want I'm going to you know sleep around do all the stuff do whatever I want to do. But yeah, I want you to save me. Well, it doesn't really work that way because the scripture talks about the lordship of right. Jesus. So that's when we are looking at our bodies or any aspect of our lives. It means, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord mm-hmm. of my life. I want every area submitted to you. And what is exciting is to know that he always wants the best for us. So as he wants the best for us, then we can know we're not going to be robbed of any good thing. Mm-hmm. So you can eat a donut on occasion, you know, or a whatever. Crumble, or a crumble cookie. Or the crumble cookie or the birthday cake. You know, I don't know. I was having to do a cake fast because we had a lot of celebrations last week. So I think I'm getting How, how many different cakes did you taste? I'm not even going to say. But maybe there might have been about five in one week. Yeah. Five cakes but they were they were five great week. cakes. Because you have to have celebrations well, with cake. And yeah. Well, and and her mom but and it's just a, it, grandbabies. It and, wasn't the whole yeah. cake. But it was still like, You did not you eat what? five cakes, that's no, for sure. No, 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 no I didn't. No, no. But it's like, well, we're going to just take a break from some cake. <laughs> but I did have a bite of that, that little crumble that cookie. cookie. That, that doesn't don't count. Know. It's not cake. Exactly. It's a whole different genre. <laughs> Two very different things. They are very but, different. <laughs> hey, I wanted to just say, though, about thinking about this in that personhood mm-hmm. theology that yeah, you yeah. were mentioning, that, that uh, I, Genesis 127 says, so God created mankind, this version says, in the New International. God created man, mankind, human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. What is so beautiful about this is that we're created in God's image. So that's every aspect Mm -hmm. of how God created us is in his image. Mm -hmm. So that's beautiful. And that is perfection. So that mindset or that ideology that says, well, really what's important is your spirit because that's what's going to live on forever. Mm -hmm. So your body, if if the enemy can speak lies to discount and dilute the significant value of any aspect of our lives. So in this particular in our of our bodies, Mm -hmm. then he can ravage in that area. Yeah. So. Um, he's always looking to diminish the beauty of anything and everything that God right. created, and especially uh, humanity, because he did create man in his own image. No other thing that God created was created in his image. I'm 
no yeah. animal, no bird, no, no yeah. aspect of um, the universe, creation. Nothing. Yes, none of it. But human beings, we are created in His image. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just like the enemy wants to just wants to steal, kill, and destroy the beauty and the treasure and the worth of that. Because if he can steal that away, then he has great access um, to just bring in any other kind of destruction. So. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would always be watchful of things mm-hmm. like that. Now, nobody's looking to just be vain. So that's a whole other <laughs> side of the, oh, um, yeah. that's a whole other ditch to just fall into because everything is not just about, oh, temporal, what it is that I can see and I, to ignore the spiritual or to ignore the soul is um, irresponsible and maybe just, Maybe, very detrimental to your yeah, overall well-being. It is. And so every aspect of our being is important, submitted to God. It's not for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Well, and we even see, you know, in, in what you were talking about there, that idea that our body doesn't matter and we can do with it whatever we want. The, the moment that we say we, anything that we've been given as a steward over, that we can do whatever we want, is the moment that we've taken that thing, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, and we've taken it out of the lordship of Jesus, and we've now brought it to the side, and this is an area we've put our truth above God's truth. We've put you know, our will above God's will. So you know, God has an intention for us to take care and to return back to Him in, in good working order, if you will, everything He's given us you know, to the best of our abilities. But the same thing, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy some sweets. It doesn't, you know, but the same thing, it means we need to exercise a little bit. You know, we need to watch what we're eating. We need to go to the doctor and get our cholesterol checked. You know, we need to manage the things of our life. You know, I went for a walk today, you know, which was rather shocking to all of us that was, everybody was involved. <laughs> Even I was shocked that I went for a walk today. And um, I'm so proud of you. Thank no, you, baby. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, I, I was I was glad to didn't I feel great. I was I was glad to go for a walk. And so it was, you know, but it was in recognition of this very thing of like, okay, I've I've not been doing the things that I need to do to just tend to that area of stewardship uh, in my life, you know. So I, I think it's important that we recognize that that God has an expectation of us being good stewards. And then there's another side of that which is, you know, if you don't pay attention to your body, your body is what's carrying you from here to there. And, right. uh, and so the rest of your purpose, the rest of your, uh, your calling, the rest of everything that God has you to do, you know, everything that we're called to do in this life is going to require a body. Mm-hmm. Um, to, for everything. Yeah, there's, right. there, there's nothing that we get to do that does not require this that's body right. to be a part of it. I mean, even to pray, I'm activating my mind. I'm, you know, if I'm praying out loud, I'm using my mouth, I'm using my body. So we need to make sure that we're, we're tending to a, a key resource that God has given us. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not like these things, the, our soul and our spirit and our bodies aren't, don't affect each other. They're deeply connected. That's so right. So how I care for my body affects my emotional and mental capacity, well-being, right. how right. I approach people and life. And so, and the same in the in- inverse, you know, how I steward my mind and, and how I press into God and receive from Him. They, they all can, are connected. And so to, to try to segment them out and just assume one, if I don't, I don't have to, if, if I think, I don't have to worry about the body. I'm just going to focus on my spirit. It, it's right. short-sighted. And, yeah. and not even just our spiritual. Oh, go ahead. Maybe, no, no, no. Yeah, not even agree. just our spiritual life, even our marriage. I mean, yeah. Kim and I know our relationship is better when Jimmy exercised. Part of the reason Jimmy went for a walk today. And so, <laughs> not that she told me to or anything like that, but it just makes sense for Jimmy to go for a walk, get some of his wiggles out. And uh, and it really does. It helps to reset our emotions. You know, that kind of thing is uh, is an important recognition that we are connected. And it and it does feed all the different areas of our, of our humanity. Well, I appreciate that you would even just, you in your good at this when you recognize okay I've come I'm out of balance here mm-hmm. I need to be aware of this it's time to take a different action to get a different result or right. if something's not going in the right direction I don't know numbers on a scale I don't know you know those <laughs> yeah, are measures right. they mm-hmm. tell us something they do. so then we know oh now I need to pay attention what what do I need to adjust mm-hmm. and then it's simple there's simple adjustments it isn't with condemnation it is isn't with any self-hate it just means okay holy spirit then i need you to help me to be aware so i break out of familiar patterns and i know even as you said just because it's good for everybody to mm. walk but you are so kinetic but so much of what you do requires for you to sit focus think 
answer, no, that's respond. The vast, that's the vast you know? majority of my life. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, very productive, but yet um, could be really sedentary. Yeah. And so especially when things start early in the morning and you just keep going down that way. And if you don't make a different decision, then it, you didn't mean to, but then, oh, we didn't move a whole lot today. Right. Got a lot done, mm -hmm. but didn't necessarily move a lot. And so I just appreciate that. I think that that's just good wisdom in taking care of our temples is a part of all of it, is just make little adjustment. It doesn't have to, and it shouldn't involve any self-hatred. Because again, that's right back to where the devil doesn't want us he doesn't want to honor anything that God created. So don't let the enemy bring in shame to motivate your actions. Like, oh, I know I should be doing this. Oh, I'm just going to get right back in to take care of the temple of God. Or then you're going to put out condemnation on everybody else who's like, oh, they're eating donuts. I don't eat donuts, mm -hmm. but they're eating donuts. And right. now I feel really self-righteous and uh -huh. judgy because I'm doing something well and someone else is not. <laughs> So then that shows too, like, well, where am I? Let's start taking the thoughts captive. And when you're not operating in condemnation, when you're not hearing those, um, letting those thoughts impact how you respond, then you won't do that to others mm -hmm. either. So that's where there's real freedom. But yes, being aware to check, what is it that I need to do? I'm responsible here. What do I need to do? And I would think the same thing for mental sharpness. Yes. Because if you're just yeah. going to veg out, there are a lot of things to, or I don't know what people are saying these days. <laughs> is I that a, veg maybe out a still thing? Is, no. it still, is it still hanging in there? Numb out? Numb out? Yes. Numb yes, out? Yes, they're totally numbing out. It's, there's a time and a space to like just relax. We we tease because I'm like sometimes I just got to sit and stare. I've got to have no other stimulation. Mm -hmm. I've just got to sit and stare mm -hmm. on occasion. Yeah, not very often. But um, so we're not talking about that space or Sabbath or something you know that brings yeah. refreshing to you. I'm talking about that. Like no, I don't. I want to avoid life. I don't yeah. want to have to think. So now I'm just going to either you know scroll endlessly or turn on something and watch it mindlessly, without, mindlessly. Mm -hmm. and so all those things matter because our eye is a gate our ears are gates to our souls and so what are we paying attention we've got to be aware and pay attention and then that might mean i, I think we could if, as the body of christ these are just my opinions as the body <laughs> of christ i think that if we weren't complacent and we took some time to educate ourselves and learn something that we haven't already learned. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's in a new field or a new area that maybe I feel a little uncomfortable because it's a, an area of weakness. So when I say weakness, it just means it's not a strength. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to require me to read something and maybe now I have to read it back again because I don't have those um, I don't have those neuro pathways developed yet so that's going to be a little bit of effort it doesn't mean it's hard or impossible it just means it's not familiar so so many times I see that people don't don't want to learn I'm done learning mm -hmm. and the things that and it's interesting to hear people's conversations what and so we'll take it back to ourselves of like, well, what kind of what am I saying? Am I just on parroting? Am I on repeat? Did someone just say something that I liked the way it sounded with that good alliteration and rhythm? So now I'm repeating it. And do mm -hmm. I believe what it is that I am saying? And do I even know what that means? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I think it's important for us to choose to think and be uh, mentally aware of what it is that we are thinking and then choose to learn choose to love to learn right and then i think we could i could i think we could truly advance god's kingdom um at an accelerated pace if some people some of us would just get on board to start learning some things that maybe we haven't learned before so yeah. that we can grow and have greater influence in other areas yeah, and then using our, going back even to our physical bodies, letting that be a part of what are we doing to, you know, because we talk about physical fitness. Well, what are we doing that's sabotaging that? And, and a lot of times it is just being sedentary or, you know, maybe maybe one donut because I like donuts, but the fourth one, maybe we're compensating for something. Yeah. Maybe there's maybe there's some <laughs> other issues yeah. emotionally that we're trying to, to deal with. This is like really a guarantee. Uh, for yeah, sure yeah. it is. This is a guarantee. For sure it is. So it's recognizing, okay, so the issue is about being healthy 
and being healthy across all of the spectrum. So we yes. would say that's our spirit selves needs to be healthy. And that is with a good spiritual life, you know, waking up, doing the Bible cast, you know, being connected with God. First thing, having a prayer life, being sensitive to the things of the spirit, uh, you know, attending church and community so that we're living that life, you know, working on our spiritual selves. That means our physical selves. So that means getting a little exercise, getting some fresh air, getting some sunlight, you know, d doing something to make sure that our bodies are, are moving. But at the same time, also being conscious of what we eat. You don't have to be crazy, but just paying attention to, to what we're eating. But also, and I love you talk about soul care, but you know, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so often what happens is, is due to the stimulus of life, our emotions react and we're frustrated, we're angry, we're disappointed, we're, uh, we're fearful, whatever it is. There, there's a, a long list of emotions that then say, hey, I need help. I need, I need to be dealt with. And so what can happen if we're not paying attention is then we start looking in the wrong area to deal with what that thing is. Mm -hmm. So then we eat that fourth donut to try to deal with our, yeah. uh, our fear. Or we... Are, are, are numbing out. Comfort. Yeah, we're looking for comfort mm -hmm. or we're numbing out, uh, you know, mindlessly because we just want to stop thinking about it, you know. So, no, we need to be able to analyze ourselves, our full selves, spiritual self, physical self, and, and our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions, and say, okay, what needs attention right now? What, what needs a little bit of attention? And sometimes it's our emotions. We need to address how do I feel? And I know for a lot of us, I, I, don't, I don't want to be. You know, what's the word I'm supposed to use? Gender specific. I can't even remember what the words are anymore. Um, I just I just heard that. That is another topic. That's, talk a whole, that's, that. that's a whole other discussion, but I, I'm trying to get all my terms right. But, you know, a lot of guys that I know, let me say it that way, males that I know, um, often what we do is we simply ignore our emotional state. So when we feel something, we just ignore it. Or I'll feel it months after the fact. And, and not know why I feel it months after the fact. And so what happens, though, is I'll start, I won't see my emotions being out of balance, but I'll find something else in my life that is now out of balance. Mm -hmm. And when I see something else, now I've got to find the root of like, okay, why, you know, why am I, why am I binge watching this? Or why have I just totally given up on paying attention to what I'm eating? Or why have I stopped, you know, exercising at all? Whatever it is, trying to figure out, okay, what is the cause of that? And a lot of times the, the solution is not to just attack that area. So let's just say for an example um, that there's some emotion that I'm not addressing or I'm just not feeling. And instead of addressing that, I just realized, you know what, I've got to get back in shape. And so mm -hmm. all this effort and all this energy goes into dieting and getting back in shape, which there's nothing wrong with dieting and getting in shape. I know, Daniel, you, you are an exercise machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of this. <laughs> the guy that, what do you get up at four in the morning? Five. Five, even then. Four or five, they're all the same. You can yeah. go exercise with Daniel. I am not going to go exercise with Daniel. I know what Daniel does. I cannot hang with Daniel. I go for a walk. <laughs> I'm not trying to move a truck. And so, um, uh, so, the, uh, so recognizing, though, if I'm overdoing that, though, am I, am I missing the real issue, mm -hmm. which is, hey, I need to address the emotional issue. I, I need to deal with what that thing is. And I love what you're saying about our thoughts. So that's our mind. You know, are we ne neglecting our mind? Are we, you know, stimulating our mind by learning and constantly being engaged? Or are we letting our mind just kind of drift and not being disciplined in that area? And then our will, you know, the, the will is one of those things that I think ancient Christians spent a lot of specific disciplines strengthening will and, and willpower. We might just call it discipline or willpower today. You know, that's what fasting does. That's what uh, uh, some of the other ancient practices, even meditation, some of those things are all about strengthening our will. And our will is where we make the choice of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so if our will has not been exercised in a long time, we might find it difficult to stick to things and hard to overcome challenges. So we might need to start exercising our will by fasting and, and, and exercising some other disciplines. But I say all that to say, the important thing is to recognize what needs effort right now where, where is the issue and to, to look at the whole person and begin to engage on those different levels where we have the issue and then not get overdone by by trying to think we have to have it all going at the same time and i know for kim and i this is one of the questions we'll have for each other is is we'll do a self not really a self analysis we'll help each other out and go how are you doing on each one of those areas so that we can get a little bit of an evaluation yeah i even like the way you lay that out because there's one, one of those uh, practices from way back 
was just an examine at the end of the day with the Lord even to, to just ask even, hey, where am I at spiritually, physically, in my mind, will, and emotions? And instead of trying to dial all of them in at the same time, just, just letting him say, hey, this one. Yeah, let's work let, on this. Let's, let's look at this one. And okay, tomorrow let's pay attention to what I'm eating. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and how much I'm moving or what am I what am I letting like you were talking about Kim the windows what am I looking at what what am I reading what am I listening to how is that affecting mm-hmm. how I feel and what I think and how I see the Lord interacting with them so even just I've noticed that lately just seeing it like a dashboard I know Jim you talk about dashboards all the time which I love I love dashboards just seeing the <laughs> seeing where are the dials right on these things and and what needs to move a little bit just instead of trying to put everything at 100, which yeah. just doesn't mm-hmm. seem real. Well, I like that you even mentioned talking about the the things like eating too many chips, or in my case, brownies, like are the things that get a bad rep, you know? But I don't, and that, I don't know if that's something the kids are still saying these days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, you know I've what? Saying We're it. saying it, so We're it's all good. It. Well, Daniel, I just have to say, like the, Daniel, in, lately in your <laughs> vocabulary, he's been saying the word hearken. Like it harkens back. I'm harkening back. (laughs) I think you said that yesterday. (laughs) Bring it back, Daniel. Bring it back. Come on. You can do it. If there's anyone who can do it, you can do it. I must must have started reading the King James Version at some point this year. Harken. Harken. Behold. Behold. I do like some behold. (laughs) If you start saying thee, though, and thou. The then, the. then we're going to have a different kind of I love the brie. <laughs> yeah. I know I love us to the brie. <laughs> I don't know. I think the new King James is working for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you were saying something about brownies. Something about brownies. 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 Get a brownies. bad rap. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like those are the things that we can focus on, like binge watching, you know, mindless scrolling that that get like have the negative negativity surrounding them when in actuality, like. And eat the healthy things that can be Absolutely. can be that for us too. So Absolutely, you can yes. overtrain, you can overdo it at the gym, you can um, become obsessive tracking your, your calories or yes, absolutely, and, and obsess over what you're putting in your body. And I, I love that we're talking about it all being connected. Mm-hmm. That your mind is connected, your emotions. I mean, there have been times where um, Daniel has said, has told me like, you know, just been like having a moment or whatever, and I'm like, he's like, what do you? what do you want? I'm like, I just want to eat like a pan of brownies. Like that's just what I do want to do right now. He's like, you need to go for a run. And at first I was like, Oh, no, how, no, how no. dare you <laughs> <laughs> tell me I need to go for a run. What are you trying to say? But then I got outside and moved my body and I came back different. Yeah. And those endorphins every were time. Flying every time. And it was like, man, I could have just stayed in that mm-hmm. vicious cycle and then eaten the pan of brownies and then felt really guilty about eating the pan of brownies and my stomach hurts, you know, all and all of that stuff. But just getting my body even moving and being aware that there's something I'm coping like a, there's a coping mechanism that i'm employing right now that i could go instead and move my body and process with the lord and like see if there's something there that we need to process together that's the better choice that, that is the better choice is the better choice <laughs> mm-hmm. and i kind of see it as just kind of daily housekeeping so yeah. i like that you said it you know about daniel about um checking in with the lord regularly daily mm-hmm. So when we do ask him, just like, Lord, I'm here. And it takes just a a little bit of time. So it can be, it's easy, like in the car or just, let me just take a few minutes to just sit here. Sometimes for me, I find that I will have to sit down for just a few Mm -hmm. minutes. And we'll say, it's like, I'm just going to sit here for just a few minutes. And really, that is my time here with the Lord to say, okay, I need you to help me because I feel a little bit flustered or I feel a little bit um, stressed. And so I'm, I don't think I'm worried, but I feel a little stressed. What am I, you know, what am I, what's really bothering me mm-hmm. here? And so then to just have that conversation with him to just say and ask him, Holy Spirit, I just welcome you in to every layer of my soul because we're multidimensional beings. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just real simple, like, oh, this one little area. Well, I've got a lot of 
areas and it's all complex. I just want him in every aspect of right. it. So I'll say, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, I ask for you to just shine your light in every layer of my soul that there will be nothing that's hidden in darkness. I don't want to justify anything. I don't want to waste any time going, no, it's fine. It's fine. Now, I'm not going to say that sometimes if somebody asks you, that's just a, somebody that you don't want to like share everything with. And like, how are you doing? I'm like, fine. That's all they need to know. <laughs> it doesn't mean that right. I don't know. I'm not fine right now. And I need to have a moment, but I'm not going to have this moment with you. Okay. Right. Or not mm -hmm. here in this setting, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I can go like, okay, Lord, I'm I don't want to just say I'm fine. I want you to address any area. And what is so sweet is that he does nourish our souls. And I think it's John 15, 9. I think it's in the Passion Translation. Jesus says to continue, let me continually nourish your heart. Yes. And so I love how sweet that is that he knows that we need this process of a continual nourishment. Mm -hmm. So I haven't done something wrong just because I, I'm a human being and I need Jesus yeah. nourishment mm -hmm. continually yeah. so even as a proactive practice I like to pray Jesus I need your continual nourishment and what's so beautiful about that then too is that I am I'm showing him I'm aware that I need this and I have found it helps me not just to be crazy <laughs> for sure you know I can say that in this season of life it's just sweet to not be fighting thoughts like, oh, take that thought captive. Oh, take that thought yeah. captive. Over time, you do develop this place of like, oh, my thoughts are taken captive. My mind is bound to the that of Jesus Christ. I am living in this state of continually having him nourish my soul, my what I'm thinking. I'm not having to think, don't think that. Um, so I'm by no means trying to say that this is like, oh, you just achieved this perfection. I'm not saying that, but I am saying it's freedom. And yeah. that's what Jesus does for us. He set, He came to set the captives free. And so as, as we just acknowledge him continually, he is the one who does come and he does those things for us. And it shows that we need it. So I think that's very important for everyone and for all of us just to acknowledge that Jesus, I need this. Because even when we, it'll prevent us from resolving resorting to compulsive behaviors to oh, to compensate right. for the area of lack. If we will go mm -hmm. to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. I cannot do that this myself. You know, why am I trying to so over overachieve, whether it's in a hobby, whether it is what my social media looks like, mm -hmm. or whether it is my career, you know, I'm working for something. I'm not saying that we don't um, operate in excellence, but asking the questions of why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. And I think that's really good. And, and when I, when you look at how we do that as a whole person, we have to realize there's a rhythm to life. And part of that rhythm is the seasons of life. And so I, I think one of the things that we, we often make mistakes on is when we look for a formula that if we can just follow this formula, mm -hmm. everything's going to be in balance <laughs> and it's gonna come along great. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that just doesn't work. There, mm -hmm. There's not, it's not a formula. And you know, what Kim and I find is, is especially with the seasonality of life. When I say seasonality of life, I'm not just talking about, you know, obviously the, the weather seasons, but well, you guys know, you have young kids, you're coming into May. When you have kids that are in school, May's crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. you have just so much that's happening as the year, school year is wrapping up and just lot, you know, so you're in this kind of intense activity with kids that's different different than sometimes in the rest of the year. Then you have summer where the kids aren't in school. Now you're in a different season, um, you know, and, and so Kim and I have found it too, even not having kids, you know, or, you know, having grown kids in this life, we, we have seasons that our, our relationships are going to. Things are super busy at work sometimes and other times they're just normal busy, not super busy. I don't think they're ever not busy, but they're, you know, they, they, we're not in a burst season. Mm -hmm. And all of that causes us to, to look at the whole and reevaluate regularly rather than trying to fit some perfect formula yeah. that's going to that's going to somehow make it all balance at the end of the day. And so we just have to be sensitive to the Lord and and be willing to adapt as we're going through and and trying to manage each one of those areas. I, I do want to hearken back to the question. <laughs> If I could, if I could say "harken" just for just a minute, yes, let's harken. I can borrow your word. Let us do "harken." Let us harken back, because I, I do remember. Uh, I think at the end of the question, there was. I don't know. I'm like, quit, don't do the harkening. Don't don't hark, hark all back. the harkenings. Harken. And because um, I do know what that word means. And, uh, 
when we when we go back to the question, there was also, I think, a, a little self image question of feeling mm-hmm. pressure. Yeah, you know, in a culture that is that that is pretty focused on the physical. Yeah, um, it, when that part of the question, I think yes. if, yeah, I, if I remember absolutely. that right, and mm-hmm. so I would just want to encourage all of us in that. You know, that's just a trap. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's different genetics. There's different things for everybody. And we need to be healthy. We need to pay attention. But there is a horrible trap. And, you know, we've got to recognize that dieting and physical fitness are multi-billion dollar industries. And so they Mm -hmm. do a lot of effort in advertising and all of those things to try to, you know, set the standard of what they believe, you know, perfection ought to look like and we all should be striving for it and we just got to break out of that i mean we just can't live not a balanced life you can't live a balanced life and try to try to adhere to all that yeah well i don't know i think i'm feeling some conviction (laughs) 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 because i'm I'm like oh that seems like that's gonna help me in 30 days my abs are gonna look like this yeah Yeah. oh 99 cents for a month I think I'll do that. <laughs> well, it's well, interesting though. I'm I mean, telling on myself. <laughs> there's like there's two sides to this coin because there's also culturally this thing. I, like I, I guess I could call it a movement because everything is a, can be a everything's movement. a movement everything today for sure. Oh, yeah. This whole like body positivity movement where it's like. I kind of, I am this way. This is the way that I was made, and so everybody should just celebrate that. And it's like. Okay, awesome. You are made in the image of God with different genetics, different bone structure. You were sure. you were made. Your healthy body was made to look and be a certain way. However, that doesn't give us license then no. to just continue to treat our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, like trash. Right. And so there is that right. like striving for, you know, perceived perfection, what the world thinks that I need yeah. to look like and also on the on the other side celebrating this body positivity, which I'm, which I'm all for. I'm like, I want to celebrate what, how God made me, but also like there's a trap there too, that you can fall into on the other side. Oh, for sure. Because then it just, it just gives permission to neglect. Yes. And, and obviously that's not, that's not what God had intended either. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, something I was thinking about earlier, I was thinking about our emotions. I'm not sure you mentioned or spent much time in the emotion part of the soul. I covered all so that I'm needed to be covered. I'm just going to kind of go back. <laughs> much time as we needed to spend. Let's talk about I've our emotions. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> I was going to talk about your emotions, honey, but I was just going to talk about emotions because I was, I love this scripture and I wanted to just share it and it's third John one, two. And he says, uh, I'm going to read it out of the amplified beloved. I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So when our soul is prospering, then our body will That's also absolutely true. prosper. Yeah. So it goes that direction. So mm-hmm. we can't neglect the soul and think that just because we might be fit with our body, well, there are other things. These, I mean, these are, there are random things that you think somebody was healthy and fit and you're like, wow, how did that happen? You know, or how did they get sick? Or why are they struggling with, you know, some of these diseases or something? Well, you can't see everything mm-hmm. on the right. outside, for sure. but we are a whole being. So it just means, yeah. um, we've got to pay attention to the soul. So when our soul is prospering, then we're also going to be in good health, even as our as our soul prospers, our body is also going to prosper. So that's always interesting to think about. So I always, I will go back then to like, okay, these emotions. I remember years ago, I had a situation that I was doing great. Love Jesus. I'm in a great place. I I mean, I'm thinking I'm doing really great. Mm -hmm. And I mean, feeling his presence, all those sweet things. Yeah. And I got shingles and I had never even heard of anybody even having horrible. shingles. Mm. Now I didn't ex- exactly have them so much on the outside, but it's nerve pain that it's you awful. feel on the inside. It felt mm. like a hot rope that was um, abrasive and it was rubbing and against like your inside of your nerves. It's painful. So I have so much compassion and I feel thankful that I at least know to have compassion for that. Cause I know what that felt like. 
So that's always a good thing. When you Mm -hmm. experience something, it helps you to be compassionate toward people when they are struggling. So I asked the Lord, it's like, Lord, what is going on? I mean, I couldn't, I didn't, I had to be at home, had to be by myself, trying to be comfortable. And it just was difficult. And I asked the Lord, I said, "Um, what is this? Where is this coming from? And he responded, Holy Spirit responded. And this was a process of about five different times that he asked me. He said, Kimberly, he asked me about a situation that I'd got a call from a teacher at school. And it was one of those kind of calls that's basically the teacher's tattling on my child. And I'll just put it that way. And so he said, how did you feel when this teacher called? And I said, oh, I forgave her, and I just blessed her, and Lord, because I was thinking, oh, I've forgiven her. I'm not harboring unforgiveness, but I'll forgive her again. Lord Jesus, I forgive her. Went through this whole thing. So it literally took about five times, and about the fifth time, he said, Kimberly, how did you feel Mm -hmm. when that teacher called Mm -hmm. you? And in that moment, I heard what he asked, and he asked how I felt. And so I instantly just began to mm-hmm. weep. And I didn't know where that was coming from. I said, well, it really was heartbreaking because of the whole situation. And he said, um, and I said, but Lord, I couldn't just cry, you know, with a teacher on the phone. That's right. not the time. He said, no, you didn't have to cry then. He said, but I care about your feelings. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, why, why would you withhold from me from what it is that I treasure and I capture and I place in a bottle? Because the scripture talks about him holding our tears in a bottle. And I thought, well, I, I figured that was kind of symbolic or something. Mm-hmm. I don't, And I still don't admit to understand it all. But that's what he brought me to. And I said, oh, I knew that he treasured my tears. And then he said, Kimberly, uncried tears are toxic to your body. Mm -hmm. And so then when I realized I had tears to cry that had been pent up, that were unattended to, and those emotions had been unattended to. And so it didn't mean that I did something wrong. I didn't need to go have another conversation with the teacher. He worked all that out. So there was not an issue like that that I had to deal with, but it was an internal emotional issue that he was highlighting to teach me something about I want you to care for your emotions you don't have to cry when you're right there in that point of conflict but then later come to the Lord and say Lord and even just say help me through this because I don't even know how I feel right now because right now I'm just kind of in a numb state because God gives you that grace that when it's not that time to cry you can you know be a responsible and mature individual and talk Mm -hmm. through a process so it doesn't mean I'm going to fall apart but then later I need to come and be with him to sit at that later and just say okay i need help with this this was an issue that i'm not really sure that i'm processing my emotions and he just said i just want you to sit here and i want you to be with me and he Mm -hmm. said and when you when those tears want to come up just let them cry and you know i always think about that because i always heard that voice or always heard that line that said but if i start crying i just don't know that i'll be able to stop yeah <laughs> it's so dramatic yeah, it's, you not know? True. <laughs> it's not true eventually you run out of water <laughs> he'll give you grace well, scientifically not possible. so it's not true yeah. now i'm not saying that there aren't times uh-huh. when you don't cry hard and don't feel but that i never really right. had that i mean i kind of cried a few times and then just had a few tears that i got was just a little tender for a while and then i was fine and then i could breathe and feel good and then Mm -hmm. I had space but not tending to our souls takes up space and so when we find ourselves having a very um, small bandwidth for dealing with conflict dealing with issues or no I can't even think about learning something else or reading another reading a book (laughs) Mm -hmm. I can't even think about that right now because I've got so much on my plate really do we have so much on our plate or are we just operating in such a small bandwidth of our lives because we haven't done the daily practices of housekeeping, going before the Lord and just saying, Lord, shine your light in my soul. Bring attention to any area that I need to either bring to you, either repent of or Mm -hmm. because sometimes you just got to say, I'm so sorry. I just like being mad at him. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of feels good. I just have to go, okay, I'm giving that over to you or this hurt really badly or I felt embarrassed. Now, what 
what am I going to do with that? I don't know. Jesus, just shine your light, and I need you to continually nourish my heart. Romans 5, 5 says that God pours his Holy Spirit, pours his love into our hearts Mm -hmm. by his Holy Spirit. So if his love is filling my heart, it's a simple prayer to pray for soul care. Holy Spirit, come and yes. fill my heart with your love. Because if there is love there, his perfect love casts out all fear, anxiety, worry, all those things. So I'm like, come in and do a holy displacement. And he will come and do those things so that we can be who God's called us to yeah. be. We can be healthy in our mind, our emotions, the decisions that we're making, how we process and live through life. We're not operating in condemnation. We're not being judgy. We've got freedom and grace for others. And then we've got bandwidth to yes, learn right. things and um, learn new new ways to do things, to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I believe, where real creativity comes from. Well, and, you know, even as a scientific example of what you're talking about, this soul body connection, you've got cortisol levels and stress connected directly to belly fat, you know, and that's a, I don't know why I'm pointing at my stomach when I say that, but I want to, I want to hear more about that. For yes. Real. Yes. You don't know this? No, oh. I don't think I've heard. I mean, it makes sense. But oh, just, so just, annoying. I just Googled it. Just, you know, stress so stressed fat. out belly causes risk, treatment and prevention health line, you know, <laughs> stressed out belly, <laughs> stressed out belly. So no cortisol levels and belly fat are connected. And so uh-huh. the more stressed out you are, because it really hits, if I remember it right, it's been a long time since I looked at it, but it, it has to do with the fight or flight response. And yeah. so, you know, when, when we're stressed, it's triggering our amygdala to the fight or flight kind of thing. What do I got to do? You know, and but the problem is when you're dealing with stress, you're not dealing with an imminent attack of a lion, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so that you're going to run away. And so what happens is, is cortisol gets released in our system. And it's kind of like, especially when you're stressing at a high level of stress, you know, you're worried about finances, you're worried about your job, you're just at a, you know, and, and, you know, everybody says they have a stressful job. And I know there's different stress level jobs, but learning to manage our stress is, and, and really actually learning to live stress free is what is so important. Thank you. I, I saw you look at me. <laughs> <I'm> just, <I'm laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Learn, learning how to not live in stress um, is, uh, is important because it, it changes our biochemistry. And when we live stressed over a long period of time, a lot of cortisol keeps getting dumped on our system and so our body is storing up for an emergency and so it literally triggers um, fat storage particularly in the abdomen to prepare for the impending doom that the body thinks is coming so we're actually telling our soul is telling our body there's an emergency our body is trying to respond to that and uh, and so literally just like this verse says so if you want to you know a great way to to kind of help your your physical self is to deal with your emotions because dealing with dealing with that stress learning how to give it over to god live in his love let let him take care of it you know there's nothing too big for him letting him be the the lord of our life and i know this is like ministry for me i know that's what i'm saying and um Yielding all that to him is how we release that stress and keep that cortisol from building up, which is affecting our body. Well, and there's, I love that you started this conversation out talking about hermeneutics because even um, that, you know, you take another layer up and back out even further. There's a rich theology of the body throughout scripture, starting with Genesis, but then even like our God is a God who embodied the flesh. Jesus came down. Right. As and was born, not just came down as a full grown man, embodied the whole life cycle, um, giving up his life so that then we can embody his spirit right. and live out this life. So there's a, yeah. a connection with God where you see and, and Jesus's life, what you're talking about, Kim, where he's Jesus weeps and he hurts and he's and he gets mad and he gets stressed out by disciples who don't understand him and <laughs> and so he he goes through these cycles and rhythms and regularly you see him getting away with God that's right processing what's going on and then and then leaves us the helper that that lives in us and now we get to walk this out as Jesus did such a so just even seeing it on that level where you, you the question was focused on kind of that one verse but all the way through because Jesus, when he ascended, he ascended with a body. That's right. right? The tomb was empty. And so then also what we're told is, it, it, Jesus even asked about it. There will be a resurrection of the body. Of the body. That's right. And so w- there will be a body in heaven. That's right. So the body matters. <laughs> the, the body, body matters. does matter. <laughs> the body matters. It will be a glorified body. Yes. That's right. But the body does matter. Like. I know, right? I'm hearkening Perfection. back here just a, a minute. So much hearkening. <laughs> so much hearkening today. Um, so I'm thinking about a couple of things we've talked about. One, um, of course, like 
our, our, our physical body and taking care of it and, and health. But then also like, um, Kim, you've mentioned a couple of times, like just even being willing to learn. And I would say that to learn something new and even learning about in regards to health and our bodies, like has been something that's been really important for us in that, um, and asking the Lord, like, Lord, how do you want us, how do you want us to care for our bodies? Like, yeah. what would you have us do? And there was a season where, I mean, he, he said, I want you to be healthy for the long haul. Mm-hmm. And That's we're right. like, okay. So that kind of sent us on a journey of just simply getting an education about what's in food, you know, and how food is made. And then like recognizing there's a lot of chemicals in some food. And actually there's this whole science about that tries to get you addicted to stuff so that money can be made, you know? And so then it's like, okay so let's so then so let's learn you know and make different choices i grew up on canned peaches pork and beans and (laughs) nutty buddies did you have spam (laughs) little debbie's i had some spam (laughs) it was a whole thing yeah that was kind of like the wave where they were trying to make everything like so simple like the modern woman and woman how because that was like the modern woman that was the supposedly was like the june cleaver of like she was gonna cook so we were gonna make you modernize that oh (laughs) you don't have to go grow your own vegetables or have fresh food get it out of a can here's pour this soup in with this rice and we're like going i don't think this is food (laughs) this is like plastic yes oh well then i mean so then we, we started like learning about what it looks like to eat whole food and also learned that it it takes a lot more work to prepare whole food and then it does to open up a can and then talking about going back to we were talking about different seasons of life i mean i'm very like i remember very specifically with very small children like the lord had us in this place where he was like i want you to eat whole food i want you to prioritize meal planning i want you to pri- i want you to prioritize mm, not just good, like brave. fuel fueling your body with what you can find wherever but i want yeah. you to be intentional about yeah. actually fueling your body and so there was i mean we have like three small babies and sunday was prep day sunday was, was prep a lot day of vegetable cutting on you know? sunday That's and it awesome. meant that we were saying no to some other things mm-hmm. um and then that season has shifted and like it was it was for a season yes. and now the season looks very different but and then also even recognizing um you know how what, what i learned during the season is that sugar actually makes me angry whenever i eat too much sugar I get hey. angry and frustrated. Hey. And so then it's like, well, why would I want to overindulge? You know, not that I can't enjoy a crumble cookie like I did today, <laughs> but why would I want to overindulge in something that is going to that actually makes me angry and makes me feel stressed out and I get I get these headaches. Why would I want to do that to myself? Exactly. That's so. really good. Well, and it's even it leads me to I was thinking about John 14, 26 when it talks about Holy Spirit being the comforter. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we ignore that we need comfort. Mm-hmm. Because it yeah. takes humility to say that I need comfort. Because mm-hmm. even why do we call it comfort food? You know, right. and that's the food that's rich in fat and whatever <laughs> some plastic <laughs> some stuff <laughs> and it's like well why we, you need that comfort so i'm not saying that we don't ever have that chicken fried steak and gravy right? i was thinking not, of chicken fried steak too uh, so it, that it, must be it is the comfort mm-hmm. food so i'm not saying that we don't have those things right. but this shouldn't be the part of our daily life or our yeah. regular the regular food that we eat but that takes me back to thinking we need Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit to be our comforter. So even just saying, Holy Spirit, I need comfort. Mm-hmm. Because when we don't have an area in our hearts that has comfort, it's crying out. There's mm-hmm. a legitimate need. Yes. So yeah. if we, and then if we're still trying to cover it up, but then we're like, I don't know, I ate the bag of chips or I ate the pan of brownies. I, now I physically don't feel well mm-hmm. and I feel shame. And I'm mad about it. Even that, <laughs> I'm mad about it. <laughs> and now that need is still not comforted. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, that's so, so good. Yes. Because we're not saying that there's not enjoyment in life. Right. That's not what we're exactly. talking about. Exactly. Right. But, but where do we need to find comfort? Right. And, and where does that comfort actually come from that allows us to enjoy Yes. Life and friends and food and drinks. And yeah. Yes. So yes. maybe even a good question is to ask ourselves, am I doing this because I enjoy it or am I doing it to comfort something that it is that I need to address a different way? That's, a, mm-hmm. that's right. That's good. I love that's it. That's really good. 
Okay, I think there's one other place that I think is worth going in this in this conversation. That you know, feel, I mean, if it, I'm gonna lob it out there. Feel free to tell me like, <laughs> no, yeah. Brianna, I think that fits here. But I'm thinking about like so caring for ourselves and our bodies, and also this culture we live in, and that that balance the the culture that is you know performance culture. Like you got to look a, look a certain way. What is that balance between and and how it relates to like your body being a temple and caring for your body? with things like how you present yourself, like the way that yeah. you dress, you know, good hygiene, like, and things like that. And like <laughs> getting your hair done, you know, and like for, you know, for women, like putting on some makeup, you know, versus showing up in your sweats and your bed head, you know? Well, even <laughs> the, what makes me think about this is that Colin the other day, <laughs> he gets out of bed <laughs> and it's like a school day. His hair is just madness. You know, it's just so madness. Cute. And he, he is precious in the morning. He has a really cute bad head. But he was like, <laughs> mom, why do we, can I, can I just go to school with my hair like this <laughs> today? And I was like, well, can he? No, no, he can't. Yeah. <laughs> but, but why? But why? <laughs> What's the value we're trying What's to the communicate value? to yes. our child? What is the value? That's good. I want to hear what 7 you said. Where, where did you land? Well, I kind of landed in somewhere in this vein of, well, like, you know, wherever we go, like, I, I, I kind of tied it into like, we represent Jesus, you know, and we want to, we want to show that we care for and about like what Jesus has given us. And God has given us this body. He's given us this hair and he's, he's given us these things. And it, it's important for us to take care of what he has given us. And yes. so that means we shampoo our hair because this yes. is what happens to our hair after it's been a couple There's of days. There's only it's so like, much dry shampoo can do. Yes, exactly. And if for him, I mean, for this 7 a.m. conversation, you know, and he like, and for all that, he was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, and then it was, <laughs> And then it was over, but then it got me started thinking, okay, like I wasn't expecting him to ask me that this morning, you know, but it's important, but then like being able to articulate the why and, and the value behind it. So it was, that was our little 9 a.m. or nine-year-old 7 a.m. conversation. 7 a.m. Yeah. conversation. Yeah. And we did his hair. We went and did his hair. Well, I think that's good. <laughs> I think that Jesus, Jesus is worthy of being showcased well. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it, nobody's saying perfection. Nobody's trying to say like cover model or anything. Right. But whatever it is that God has given to you, being sure that we're as faithful as yes. possible with what he yeah. has entrusted to us. So mm -hmm. that can even be seen as good stewardship for one. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, well, what brings you joy? How how do you feel the best about yourself? Because when you feel the best about yourself, the then yeah. you're going to have that confidence to be able to do what God is calling you to do. Yes. And that may be even just as simple as, you know, going over to say hello to somebody that you see at a coffee shop or yeah. seeing somebody even in in the vehicle cuz I think that's always funny too. When you're in the tr in the car in a vehicle in a truck, people still see you. Right. <laughs> you are are still visible. Sometimes I think it's really like, you know, um, people see you. <laughs> You're not invisible. You know, sweatpants and a hat don't make you invisible. They don't. So um, I'm not saying that it doesn't mean we have to, you know, dress to, you know, the nines or like for a fashion show or anything. But you can dress for um, to make your I mean, one, start with good hygiene. You mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Start with good hygiene. Take care of yourself in that way. And there are some things that you should do every day and maybe even throughout the day. <laughs> Just, mm -hmm. you know taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I'm thinking about also just being married, I know that one of the needs of a husband is to have an attractive spouse. And that doesn't mean you have to look like a supermodel, but it does mean it, you look like you care for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got two thoughts on this in two, because I believe then. And, and can I just echo, this is yeah. a really big deal. So this is not like something you read. Okay. This, I'm just saying, this okay. is a really big deal to us guys. Okay, I love it. And I'd love to have you guys speak into it. Yeah, then. me too. Mm -hmm. uh, so then what happens then is uh, it goes the other way too. So if a husband is sewing into and caring for his wife, 
that will show, that will be mm-hmm. visible. Because if a wife is being filled and a love bank is full, well, it's easier to be more um, energetic. It's easier to feel good about yourself because then you're being encouraged. You're being, you know, when, when Jimmy's believing in me for husbands to believe in your wives, to encourage them, to affirm them, all those things, then that wife will be as just a part of the result of that is that she will be more um, attractive and will care for herself more because you got some encouragement mm-hmm. in that. You know, it's like anything else. If somebody tells you like, oh my gosh, you are such a wonderful writer, then you're like, oh, well, thanks. It bo- gives you a boost to yeah. think, well, maybe now I'll do that some more. Mm-hmm. So if your husband says like, oh, you're really beautiful or I think that you're, you know, you are, you always have such a great way of explaining things or you do such a great job with our children or I really appreciate how you keep our home I really appreciate how you care for yourself you get those encouragements and then you believe them Mm -hmm. because this is the person who has uh, this is your person this is the person who you have become one with and when that person believes in you loves you and is investing in you there will be a harvest so Mm -hmm. to speak there will be a result of that so the it So if the husband's desire and need is to have an attractive spouse, then sow into that um, spouse by encouraging and expressing affirmation through the things that she's doing and doing well. So don't just get discouraged like, well, why don't you ever? I mean, that you're just not going to get it. (laughs) You're (laughs) not going to get it anywhere that way. So don't do that. But then the other aspect I would say, and I want to hear what you'll say is that we're all the bride of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I see Jesus as he is worthy of being represented well here on the earth. So I would want that any believer, that others who would look be on the outside looking in would look to kingdom people as like, I don't know what they've got, but I want that or to live an excellent life. If we're going to live an excellent life, this is about the abundant life lifestyle. So it's not just limited to how I look when I go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) it's it's it. It includes every aspect. So it includes our vehicles. It includes our yards, which we just lost our yard people. Oh, and so I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling right That's now. So I got to find somebody. Yeah. Um, I'm being rejected. Everybody's full. So <laughs> I got to find me that person. So our yards. So taking care of our yards, taking care of our homes, taking care of our bodies, taking care of anything and everything that God has entrusted to us. So is important because Jesus is worth of being um, displayed in the very best possible way. Yes. Yeah. And we always got to realize, too, we're always saying something to the world and, and to the people we work with, to the people that we go to the store with. I mean, we're saying something. And so often, and it doesn't mean you have to, like you said, you don't have to get dressed up all the time, but not taking care of ourselves, you know, not, not ironing a shirt, you know. I mean, iron a T-shirt. You know, if I pull it out and it's all wrinkly, I'll just, you know, hit it with a quick iron. No big deal. Uh, simply because I, I want to make sure that I'm communicating something that is accurate to people that I come in contact with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can communicate buzz off. I don't want to talk to you. Uh, I don't care what you think about me. Um, but you're not going to win a lot of friends that way. And you're not going to have a lot of influence in the world. So, you know, the the old statement that comes out of Sa- uh, Samuel, where he's looking over uh, all of Jesse's sons, is God tells Samuel, you know, man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. And, you know, obviously what God was saying was, you know, I'm looking at the heart, you're looking at the outside. But the truth of the matter is, people look on the outside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things I used to do in business, I I do it even in in ministry today. If you want to know about somebody, and if you want it before you're going to decide if you're going to hire them, this actually had a manager teach me this, get in their car without them knowing. I mean, obviously. (laughs) Like, how do you do that? Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm not talking about grand theft. I'm not suggesting that. So without without warning, like, hey, you know, you can say, hey, let's let's, you know, can 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 we run to lunch together or whatever, and or you know, uh, pick me up at the airport, but don't give them a heads up that you know you're that uh, you're looking at their car. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't don't tell them you're going to do a car inspection. Um, But every time, hands down, every time, if I get in somebody's car and it's trashed, you see it in their in their performance. And you see it in their lifestyle, and it instantly tells you something 
about them and uh, and their lack of discipline. You know, going back to will, like we were talking about earlier, the exercising that part of our soul. You know, so being sloppy. You know, and it, again, it doesn't mean that you know everything's perfect. You know, you guys have kids. It doesn't mean I have Cheerios in the back seat. Oh, yeah, you know, or whatever do. whatever the, the thing is that they're <laughs> yeah. eating right now. But mm-hmm. you know, by the same token, we 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 when we take care of our stuff and we present ourselves well. It, it's an indication of the fact that we are submitting to the Lordship of Jesus. Yeah. And there's, I remember this when I was doing some writing for school uh, and, and it was, I was really left to my, my own devices to get it done. And I had a professor say to me, uh, wake up like you're going to work, get dressed, get dressed like you're going to work Absolutely. Right, and go sit down. I mean, everything, brush your teeth, do your hair yep. and then sit down and write. And yeah. don't get up until lunch. And really what, yeah. it, what it did was it was a stewardship conversation. Yes. Like I'm going to bring my best, but that means I'm going to get ready yes. for today. Because I don't know what's coming. I don't know what question I'm going to get at 7 a.m. from my nine-year-old. I don't know who I'm going to see at the store as I'm going and coming. I want to work as into the Lord. So to be yes. the most ready for today. And I think yes. everybody has different ways they're the most ready. But there's there's getting ready and then there's not. And even thinking through, you know, uh, I know being ready for the day means I probably need to be up and not talk to some people first so that mm-hmm. I can be ready to talk. Mm-hmm. I also know that it's going to take me. <laughs> yes. And just, it's great that you know that about yourself. Yes. <laughs> when we figured that out, there was major breakthrough. Oh, breakthrough. Yes. <laughs> but I also know my hair is going to take a fraction of the time that it's going to take Brie. So I'll do the kids' lunches and give you the time to be That's ready a good for husband. your day. You don't just stand in the door and tap your foot and look at your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like, good? Like, what is going on with y'all? Get it together. <laughs> so I think there, everything you said, Kim, I think is really, really good and really important about, you know, a husband desires a, a, a wife who's attractive and, and presents herself well. I, I think I'm thinking through like, do I give her the space to do that? Or am I like, That's you need awesome. to get the breakfast ready. You need to get my breakfast ready. <laughs> I'm going to watch sports center <laughs> and then we can get on the road. <laughs> so That's good. That's really sweet. Yeah. Thank you. I, appreciate that, I love it. I love it. Well, this has been a fun conversation. This has been fun. Thank mm-hmm. you, guys. Absolutely. So glad you were here, Daniel. Ah, I Thanks, love you. Awesome Daniel. Thanks for having Yeah, Yay. we love y'all. We love we y'all. We love you guys. <laughs> okay. All done. All done. That clapper, yeah. Woo! Done. Done.